everybody. I'm Mr. Hugger, and welcome to day one of the new school year. I want you to see my face and hear the words that I'm going to say to you and understand that what I'm about to share with you is myself. It's my person. It's my soul. It's my being. It's who I am. And the reason that I want you to know who I am before we start this school year is because all of our stories matter. If you know who I am and I'm putting out on the line all my strengths, weaknesses, experiences, vulnerabilities, because I want you to accept me as your teacher, but also someone we're going to spend a lot of hours, hundreds of hours together. And I want us to enjoy that time. If you haven't been the biggest fan of history, then I'm going to try to change that. I'm going to try to make it interesting. We're going to make projects that are, have audio and visual. And if you prefer to write, you can write. And if you prefer to draw, you can draw. And if you prefer to sculpt, you can sculpt. I will assess you in whatever way you want to communicate this information. If you like making presentations or videos, we can do that. Look, I want you to enjoy this class. I want you to enjoy this year. You know, I'm not here to punish you. I'm not here to be over you as an adversary, but I want you to know who I am. Once you know that, I want to get to know you and understand your story because that matters too. And by the way, all of our collective stories, that's called history. And that's what we're learning about this year. And I hope to bring it to life a little bit for you and we'll learn together. So today's goal is for you to get to know me, to like me, hopefully, you don't have to, but to respect me and respect each other. And this will be an awesome year that we can all enjoy and look forward to being together in this class. I want to look at every class period on my schedule and be excited when I step through the doors because you're going to come see me. I didn't want it to be that way. And it can if we take that collective mentality. I'm not here to hate school or anyone. If you don't like school, I'm sorry about that. But I can try to make this class as enjoyable as possible. The notes that I get from students who traditionally maybe don't write that many handwritten notes means a lot to me. Just to read a few. Hi, Mr. Hogger. Thanks for being a great history teacher and putting up with me. I appreciate your fun and engaging teaching style. It was really cool you let us kids speak up in class. I learned a lot. Joe, that's exactly what I want. I want you to be talking. I want you to supply as much or more information than I will. And I want to lead discussions because everyone's opinion is valid. Everyone's story matters. One more. Hey, Mr. Hogger, just watched your video. It's my end of the year video. Let me tell you, that video is so inspirational and I really hope to get you as my U.S. history teacher next year. The mindset that you have, it's legendary. Just like your enthusiasm in class. Thank you for being such an amazing teacher. The world needs more people like you. That's why I teach. Guys, girls, I could go anywhere. I could be broadcasting right now. I could be on many radio stations or TV stations. I could be doing music full time and probably starving if I did that. But the reason that I'm here is to hope, to ideally hope that one day when I'm looking back at my life, that some people took some words that I said and made a better, brighter future for themselves or for people around them. I hope to make an impact. I know it won't happen for everyone in here. Some of you will have other history teachers that you favor. That's fine. We don't all have to think the same. That's history too. But I'd really love to see the maturity in the classroom to give me a lot more reasons to come back this year. 72 letters last year. I'd love to see even more this year. I just want you to be open to that. If you are, then we can do amazing things. So here's a little bit about me. I'm from Stockton, California. And when I grew up, Stockton declared bankruptcy. It was one of the highest murder rates in the state and one of the most dangerous cities in the country. And Mayor Tubbs has done a good job the last couple of years trying to turn things around. But in Stockton, I learned that where you finish depends a lot on where you start, but it also depends on how hard you're willing to work to get above that. So many people that we're going to study in our history never had the opportunity to amount to anything. They were going to do the exact same thing that their parents did. They were going to make very little money. They are going to have a hard time surviving. And ultimately, billions of people have been forgotten in history. But some of the names, some of the people, some of the figures, they did more. They were open to the possibility of change. They were open to the words of wise people. And they were willing to work hard enough to get past where they started in life to get themselves to a better finishing point. In Stockton, I learned to set goals. To get out of Stockton mainly was one of my goals. My first gift to you is that if you write out the goals that you've set for yourself, you can succeed. You can accomplish them, but you need to remind yourself constantly. Write them out and place them somewhere where you're going to see them frequently. And you need to be constantly thinking about them, letting your mind churn. 
Just like your stomach's always digesting, whether you're thinking about it or not, your brain's doing the same thing. If you write out some goals, short-term, middle-term, long-term, we'll talk more about this, you can do almost anything that you want and you will do a lot more than you thought you could. That's guaranteed. I wish I would have started doing that in high school. So my first thing I want you to do as we learn about history and people who set to achieve, I want you to do the same thing and not fall behind your peers. If you can even get one more thing done every day before you go to bed and you still take a couple nights where you forget, you'll be 1,500 tasks ahead of the person who didn't try to do this. It's sincere, it's math, it's time, it's quantity, it's effort, but some of you are going to take this seriously and today are going to mark a better trajectory to finish further than other people. All right, so I'm going to give you some time to set goals, but let's talk about perspective. This is something that is crucial to understanding history, and it's the reason why most people in society can't talk about history or politics without arguing or getting angry or wanting to fight or shout. That is totally unnecessary because if you listen and you set goals and you look at things in more than one way, which is a real shortcoming among everyone from my age and up, If you change the way you look at things, or at least see how other people can see things, you'll be really surprised with what you see. So here's what we're going to do. A little activity here. I'm going to show you a series of pictures. I need you to be silent. I don't want you to influence what other people around you are saying. Some of you are going to be so tempted because you can't stand silence that you're going to want to interrupt or be funny. Just give silence so people can look and see with their eyes. All right. It's the same thing when people don't let people speak fully. They want to interrupt and uh, stop the mouth flapping so that they get their turn. Now, we're going to be quiet and watch for a second. And I'm going to show you what this means. Okay? So, when I show you this image, do you see, and again, say nothing, an old woman or a young woman? Okay, so if you see an old woman, can you please quietly raise a hand? Everyone look around, say nothing. And if you see a young woman, would you please now raise your hand? Right. Now, as this happens, some of you are having a light bulb moment where you have just seen a second image that you didn't see before. If we'd have moved on right away and all agreed it was one thing, we never would have seen this other side. If you see the old lady, her chin, her mouth, her eye, her hair. All right. If you see the young lady, she's looking this direction. This is her nose, mouth, chin, neck, necklace, hair. What do you see here? There are two faces here. Okay. Do you see a rabbit or a duck? Rabbit's ears, mouth, eye, duck's beak, eye, neck. See, once you see it the other way, you can understand. And sometimes you see things a new way. It's hard to see the original thing you saw before. Here you might see a donkey or a horse or a mule. You might also see a seal. Try to find both. Do you see a swan or do you see a squirrel? All right. Swan's head, squirrel's head. A girl looking away or a man who's bald with a mustache. How many legs does this elephant have? And again, you can almost feel your mind working if you're just quietly looking. It is it is and it can be really confusing, but what we see and how we see it does matter. Because we like to be right. We like to feel that our perspective is true or just 
or correct or balance. But in this situation, in these series of images, is there even a right? Or is it just the way we see things? And if you can think about this experience that we're having right now and apply it to everything we learn, you will be much wiser when you finish this course. Hey, you can go back to thinking it was a rabbit or a duck and that's what's important. But you should understand that other people might see things differently. And that's the study of history that we embark on. These are the most controversial issues generally in the American society. There is not one thing up here that we can't talk about if we respect each other and are willing to at least consider the way someone else sees things. That's what we're going to do this year because we're going to be like a family or at least a respectful group of scholarly people who may not know all the answers because I don't, but who are willing to find out and look at how other people might see things and then give good evidence and claims and reasoning to support what they think. Issues are ambiguous, meaning they can be seen multiple ways. That's what we just looked at. But everything we look at in society can also be looked at in this way. If we talk about SeaWorld, how many people think that SeaWorld is a great place? And how many people think that SeaWorld is an awful place? And beyond just the rides or the food, we can talk about the animal perspective. And it's important to realize that just because you think you're right, the other people might have valid arguments too. In 2009, I won a debate championship in the state of California, and this was the topic. Here's the pro side of SeaWorld. And again, this is just for the sake of understanding, all right? But people might say that SeaWorld is a lead research institution. We learn so much more about animals that are kept and cared for at SeaWorld with their amazing staff and trained professionals. And that benefits the world because we understand more about the world around us. They have been doing work with a variety of species. And what's even more important than the work and the research is the look on a child's face when they are wowed when they encounter an orca or a dolphin or a seal. Because for many of the residents, this might not be the first time they've seen sea life, but for most people who come from landlocked states or other areas or other countries, they've never seen these animals in this capacity. They've never had their minds wonder about sea life, and they may never have really thought too much about the ocean at all. But many of them, when they go home with their souvenirs or their photos or their memories with their family or their friends, will now have a forever changed view of the ocean, may grow up to care about climate or our earth, may donate to ocean causes or cleanup efforts, or might become marine biologists even. SeaWorld sparks imagination and care that maybe never would have been blossomed if someone had just gone to Disneyland or another theme park. All right, so that was a pretty good argument, right? Well, how about the con side? As the movie Blackfish portrayed, SeaWorld has turned a blind eye to a lot of the welfare of their animals over the years. There have been accidents, there have been deaths, there have been tragedies, there have been illnesses, diseases, and animals that clearly don't seem to be functioning in their upright mental capacity. And who would? If you took an animal with a 3,000 mile travel per year and the freedom of an almost endless ocean and put it in the size of a bathtub container, wouldn't you feel limited? Wouldn't you go a little crazy? Wouldn't you feel unhealthy? And the fact that we allow children to come in and see creatures like this that are contained, that are deprived, that are torn from families or parents or the ability to swim in the ocean, fend for themselves and use their skills and abilities. This is one of the greatest tragedies that we allow our children to see. So as we see in those two perspectives, each one could have really strongly held beliefs, really passionate opinions. And it's hard to tell if you just look at opinions. I didn't give any sources. Did you notice that? I didn't cite any statistics. That was just feeling. And most people or many people walk around on feeling. This year, we'll learn to take our feelings and our observations and our experiences 
and also use claims and evidence to help embolden our reasoning and make it stronger. But we'll also see multiple sides of an issue. Okay. So I want to tell you more about myself. And I have more examples that I'll share with you as we go. But I just want to know that and want you to know that when you can use evidence, reasonings, claims, be respectful, listen, and then use evidence and reason to make arguments, you can persuade a lot of people and change their mind. And that is the definition of power, to be able to change what people understand and how they see it. Upton Sinclair had a great quote. It is difficult to get a man to understand something when his job depends on him not understanding it. And I think we'll see a lot of examples uh, as the year goes on. The thing I want you to do, and you're doing a great job of now, and it is absolutely fundamentally important to this class, is for you to be able to always listen. And so please listen now as I go through my story a little bit and tell you who I am and how I gained some of the skills and abilities and understanding of history to be able to look at both sides. And usually there's more than two. Album plug for two sides. One of my most recent albums. Um, but it's to, to realize that as we sit here today and we plan out goals together and we start to understand who we are, everyone's perspective is really important and we need to hear it out so people can feel heard. All right, here we go. So an example is I don't want anyone this year to come at the attitude of just saying that things are terrible or things suck or people suck or something's all one side. Because we need to understand a deeper four-step refutation model of how to argue. For example, if I if I had my Sacramento Kings poster in the corner of my room, and you walked in and say the Sacramento Kings are the best basketball team ever, I said that to you, and you say the Kings suck, first of all, ouch, that hurts. I get emotional attack there. I grew up with that team. Going to games with my dad for the first time. Uh, exploring an underdog situation where the Kings never had high profile players and high salaries and they were able to battle the biggest, baddest teams in the league and have the best record for multiple years and make the playoffs eight years straight and how important it was for me to buy my first Kings jersey and wear it proudly through the streets or how it gave me identity and gave me community with the people of San Joaquin Valley. Right? You lose all of that when you make an unintelligent attack claim. But... You can totally put me down. Be smart with claim and evidence and reason. You say, according to Mr. Hogger, the Kings are the best, but I disagree because of their poor performance and a decade without making the playoffs. And that's important because a losing team can't be the best. And now you've shut me down. You've made irrefutable arguments and I'm probably still a little attacked, but hey, you're proving your point, right? Let's talk about my perspective and where it came from. And then I want to learn about yours. And I'm genuinely going to read the answers to the surveys that I gave you. I want to know all about you, uh, at least in terms of what you like, what you don't like, what you like about history class and what you don't, and what this class, what you want it to be in its best. So I can try and I will craft it to match as many people as I can. And I'll understand more about who you are. So please take it seriously. All right. So here we go. About goal setting. My summer goal was to set up a home studio. I wanted to research, save, invest, build, and get sponsors. I'm sitting at that desk as I recorded this. Double monitors, 32 inches. I'm actually thirsty. I wish I would have brought the water in. Didn't. Recording on a 4K camera. I got a Rode microphone. I got an MXL. I got the blue mic here. I got JBL speakers. I got Steinberg. I had a bigger um, 18 channel. It's too much. I wanted something smaller in the space. I got um, soundproofing all around the room. I got some lights that go up. I got my sponsors. This is a Godan, Canadian made, these two. This is made right here in America, Lincoln, Nebraska, Zager Guitars. They're giving me instruments to perform my music with. Drum set, Danny Hogger music sign, a few posters from my favorite bands, got Green Day up there. This rack's usually full, I was cleaning at the time. Made my own guitar, fretwire.com, got a promo code. Hogger Music, you can save $10 if you go there and buy a guitar. Built that, dip dyed it. Didn't know what that was. Did the research, looked it up. It's pretty fun. Had a great day with my friend Tavis. And really, I wish I would have started setting goals. In 2006, first time I did it, I said, I want to be on the radio, get on TV, work for a pro team, write a song, start a podcast. Started in Stockton, place full of crime, foreclosures, and poverty. Everything's got a negative and a positive side, guys. Everything. The asparagus capital of the world. How many asparagus fans we have in here? 
Stockton Sports got the ballpark, the arena, the University of the Pacific, the first university in Northern California in Central Valley. Diverse population, lots of people, and uh, 300,000 been growing. Got a new ballpark. That was my first job when I was 15. What a great job. <laughs> I have lots of stories. I'll save them for you, though. I worked 10 years in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Anaheim with ESPN Radio. With the Los Angeles Angels and the Anaheim Ducks, I did over 350 voiceovers on TV, radio, and video games. I did the weather, the traffic. We've got a backup along Highway 5. Looks like we've got a stalled car in the second lane. If you're getting around Anaheim, make sure you take Catella to the 57 if you want to get around the problem. I started at Stockton's radio station, so they gave me an opportunity and made the most of it. I worked for the Angels radio station for five years. I really loved it. I had a great time. I interviewed players after just about every game. It was a lovely, lovely few years. I played guitar. I started in high school. To impress girls. <clears throat> Sorry. To impress people as they walked by the gym every morning. And I've been now recording and performing for about 12 years. And I started in high school. So if any of you are interested in, in playing an instrument, I never had the chance to take lessons. My family couldn't afford it. I don't know how to read music. But I taught myself how to play because I loved Oasis and Green Day so much. And I play just about every day. It's one of my favorite parts of my life. Another goal I had from last school year was to write a book because I had never done that, but I always thought I was a decent writer. I wrote a broadcast for Secrets to Teaching. It debuted number one in the new releases on Amazon. And I started a podcast called Inspiring Teachers to help promote the book and talk to people and educators around the country. And now we've recorded over 100 episodes. Like, it didn't even exist a year ago. <laughs> it didn't even exist. It's so cool. Uh, we started doing live conferences, interviewing top teachers around the country performing at live events. It is a joy. And I like having multiple, you ever heard the term back burners? I like having a lot of things going on. It's one of my favorite things. Um, Spotify is brand new. So my numbers are low if anyone's looking to subscribe. But the more important thing to me is that I've been out performing on stages from five people to 5,000 like this photo. It was one of my favorite days because I was working and had to go on my lunch break to go play. It was the Cinco de Mayo Festival in Anaheim. And I walked up to the microphone. And I said, I've negotiated and they are going to allow me to play a full song, even though I'm only half Mexican. And I got a huge laugh and I came in second place out of 30 and battled the bands. $500 prize. Lost to a mariachi band. So I feel like <laughs> I was never going to uh, pull off that victory. Uh, and then I've managed to, you know, even with like, a, I wouldn't say a huge popularity following, interview some of my favorite people. One of the top Jeopardy champions who was watching on Netflix, got in touch with him over the summer, talked to him. Musicians, some of my favorites, Goldfinger, Buck09, The One Ups, they do video game music. Matthew Cause is one of my idols, and he actually helped give me feedback on one of my songs this year. By setting goals, I keep reaching bigger and better things, and I'm still not the most successful person that I maybe like to be, but I'm striving in lots of different ways. And I have always been a good student, I'm not a straight A student, not a perfectionist but someone who always listened to my teachers. And at Dominican University in San Rafael, Melba Beals was one of my mentors and teachers. And she was one of the Little Rock Nine that integrated Central High in 1957. One of the first black people to go to an all-white school in Arkansas. And someone who really changed my life and opened my eyes a lot. So having respect for me is very important because I do want to teach you some, some real core history this year. And I want you to be open to thinking about it and being mature about that. And yeah, sixth year teaching. Started in Mount Diablo as a sub. Worked at a Catholic school for three and a half years. And that's where this photo is taken. And um, it was really hard to leave. I loved, and at some point I had to make a choice of taking care of my family. And I had to move to a different place. But uh, this was a wonderful time and full of great kids and great memories. So if you have any questions now, I'm going to go ahead and take the questions. And I want to give you a chance to ask anything you want. And then I want you to fill out the, the sheets I gave you and the goals. And I want to see if anyone's willing to share out. Because if you're willing to step up right now and say, you know what, I'm comfortable enough with this guy told us everything about himself, just about, then you can start being a rock and a foundation of this class and making the year as fun and good and rewarding as I know it can be. So with that, any questions? 